Welcome back to the workshop. We want to continue taking a look at mathematical induction. For the examples that we're going to look at now, we're actually going to just look at some definitions uh, of a couple of things, uh, Fibonacci numbers or the Fibonacci sequence rather, uh, factorials, which we're already familiar with, of course. Uh, and then we're going to look at an example involving the Fibonacci numbers. So, the Fibonacci numbers or the Fibonacci sequence is a recursively defined sequence of numbers. So if we let the first Fibonacci number be one, the second Fibonacci number be one as well, then for n greater than or equal to three, we have that f sub n is equal to f sub n minus one plus f sub n minus two. So it's just, each number in the sequence is defined as the sum of the previous two numbers in the sequence. So f1 is 1, f2 is 1, f3 is equal to f2 plus f1, which is 1 plus 1, or 2. f4 is f3 plus f2, which is 2 plus 1, which is 3. But I could continue this on, right? 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, and it goes on. That's the Fibonacci sequence. It goes on forever. All right. Uh, factorials can also be considered something that's defined recursively. So uh, let's see here. If we let 0 factorial be equal to uh, 1, then for any integer greater than 1 or equal to, n factorial is simply n times n minus 1 factorial. So 1 factorial is 1 times 0 factorial, which is 1 times 1, or just 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1 factorial, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. Looks a lot like the Fibonacci sequence so far, but it doesn't stay that way. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 factorial, which is 3 times 2, which is 6. 4 factorial would be 4 times 6, which is 24. 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 factorial, which would be 120, right? We've seen a little bit of this already, but uh, the point is that we can recognize uh, factorials uh, with uh, having a recursive definition. All right, so let's prove the statement that f sub n, right, the nth Fibonacci number is greater than or equal to 5 quarters to the nth for every integer greater than or equal to 3. All right, there's not a lot of space here, so this seems a little bit weird, but we'll go ahead and get started on it. We want to identify what our statement is, and our statement is exactly as it says it here the nth Fibonacci number is greater than or equal to 5 quarters to the nth power. And the base case here would be where n is equal to 3. So uh, we consider the base case. For the base case, we let n be equal to 3. Then f sub n, we actually uh, already saw this earlier that f sub 3 is exactly equal to 2. We just calculated that above. Uh, and again, uh, kind of connecting things all together at once here, uh, I can compute what 5 quarters cubed is. Well, 5 quarters cubed, and I suppose maybe I should get rid of this a moment, 5 quarters cubed is uh, let's see here, 125 divided by 64. And this number here is just under 2. So 2 is more than this number, right? Uh, if I wanted to have 2 with a denominator of 64, so this number written uh, over 64 would be 128. 128 over 2 is definitely more than 125 over 2. It's awfully close, but 
but two is in fact larger. So we have in this case that the statement is true for n equal to three. Thus s of three is true. All right, so let's look at the inductive step. For the inductive step, we want to assume that S of K is true. For K being some integer greater than or equal to three. Then we have that, uh, let's see here, um, F sub K is greater than or equal to five quarters to the K, right? We're assuming that S of K is true and that's what S of K is. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's let N be equal to K plus one and we would get F sub K plus one, right? I wanna show that F sub K plus one is going to be greater than or equal to five quarters to the k plus one, uh, because that's what my statement is. f sub k greater than or equal to, sorry, f sub k plus one greater than or equal to five quarters to the k plus one. And of course, I don't know uh, really much about k plus one, but I do know how it's defined recursively. And that brings me to f sub k, which I, then I can bring my five quarters into the picture. So this is f sub k, plus f sub k minus one. And here I have uh, that this is, let's see here, this is greater than or equal to five quarters to the k plus, huh. Well, I don't actually know anything about uh, f sub k minus one. I didn't make any assumptions about it. I didn't actually assume here that I'm working with uh, F sub K minus one satisfying the statement. So I don't know that it does. I didn't assume it. I don't know it. So I don't have it. Huh. Huh. I can't do anything. It's awfully depressing. So what we would actually need to do is we would have to know something about F sub K minus one in order to prove this. And we can, we can actually do this, but we have to make a slight adjustment on our, uh, on our principle of mathematical induction. What we do is we consider the strong principle of mathematical induction. And when we say it's the strong one, rather than just saying that we want to show that S of K plus one is true whenever S of K is true, we're actually going to assume it's true for everything from the base case all the way up to K. Making that assumption, then we can look back and talk about F sub K minus one and utilize here the strong principle of mathematical induction to prove this statement. So we'll actually do that in our next video. Uh, so one more example of proof by induction where we utilize the principle or the strong principle of mathematical induction. So I'll see you guys back in the workshop in just a minute.